And now it's time to stop the bunghole of this week's biggest bogan emitter. And this week it goes to the FDA for another misguided attempt to protect people from themselves by stopping them from getting anti-diarrhea medication. Oh, yeah. The FDA previously received Idiot Extraordinaire four times, once for accidentally losing and then forgetting about vials containing smallpox, which thankfully were recovered years later, attempting to regulate GMO animals based on non-science and nonsense, and wanting to cut the nicotine amounts in cigarettes, despite the overwhelming evidence that it would result in more health problems from smoking, and they went against vaping, too. Yeah. That's not to mention the times we covered that the FDA wanted to regulate video games as drugs, stopping competitors of EpiPen resulting in high prices, making sure homeopathic companies go through the proper process of putting absolutely no active ingredients into their plain water, <laughs> claiming that walnuts are drugs, wow. fear-mongering about caffeine, shutting down an Amish farm for selling fresh milk, and even claiming that your own body is a drug that they get to regulate. <laughs> and they wonder why we're not sanguine about letting them regulate our food and drugs. Yeah. So the FDA announced that it's going to limit access to lopiramide, the active ingredient of Imodium AD and other antidiarrheals, lowering the dosage, requiring blister packs, and only allowing purchases of a two-day supply. And it's all yet another misguided effort to reduce the hideous slaughter of the non-existent opioid crisis by going after something no one is using to get high. Lopiramide works only on the digestive system at regular doses, but although it isn't in any way an opioid, it can have effects on the central nervous system in high doses, way high doses, like 5,000 times the labeled dose, which is generally 10,000 pills. That's so hilarious, you know, when the FDA regulates all these drugs and they say, oh, because there's a chemical in it that causes people to get high, but then if you actually do the math, you would have to, like, eat, like, ten entire packs of that drug in order to get even a mild buzz from it. Lapiramide doesn't actually reach the brain. A naturally occurring protein, P-glycoprotein, keeps the drug out of the brain. The extremely high megadoses are required to overwhelm this protein so it can't keep it all out. According to Gizmodo, there's no official data as to how many people are abusing lapiramide. Gee, imagine that. This is the government, though. They don't care. <laughs> but there are some reports of people getting high by putting thousands of lapiramide tablets into a blender and making a smoothie, several orders of magnitude less than the reports of people eating Tide Pods, but hey, why let science and the rejection of anecdotal reports get in the way of a good scare? Yeah, I have no idea why people are eating Tide Pods. They're really not. I mean, it's just... It's one of those things that everyone knows someone who knows someone who did it, but you can't actually find any cases of someone actually doing it. Yeah, well, still, I saw a funny joke one time because there were a few videos of people trying to eat Tide Pods and all that, and one person said, let's do a test. Let's all gargle potassium cyanide. <laughs> and whoever can go the longest without dying gets, gets $200. There was one that it was done up like a cooking show. It's like how to prepare your Tide Pods before eating, and... He was making things like a Clorox garnish and things like that. Yeah. A little sauce to put over the top of it. Clinical toxicologist William Eggleston said, quote, It's a cheap, legal, and easily accessible opioid alternative. No, it isn't! If you have to take 10,000 of them to get high, it's not cheap and it's not easy. Here's the thing. People love to complain that drugs in the United States are so expensive, which to a certain extent they are, but people fail to realize it's stuff like this why they're so expensive, you know? Yeah. I mean, because of all these little rules and the sphere of people getting high, I mean, just to buy a bottle of aspirin now can cost you like 50 to 20 bucks now. Yeah. And it's funny how this report in the Atlantic fear mongers about the number of calls to poison control centers over lapiramide exposure. They say it doubled between 2010 and 2015. But they don't give us any actual numbers. I mean, if it were one person in 2010 and two in 2015, that would be doubling. Yep. They never give us the actual information we need to evaluate these statistics, and that's kind of telling. And the FDA has also issued an alert for doctors to look out for lapiramide abuse, because what better things do doctors have to do with their time? <laughs> yeah. 
It's, it's like, not as if they aren't overworked with a bunch of mandated government paperwork already. Shane, when you posted that video about opioids, there was actually a couple of people that were accusing you of being a drug addict because, you know, you were trying to bring up that, you know, that you're in chronic pain. And they were saying, well, if you're in so much pain that only a really strong opioid can cure you, I think that's a sign you've got an addiction problem. I'm addicted to not being in pain. And I tell people all the time because I know a thing or two about addiction. Addiction happens when you take a drug even though you physically don't need it. It's a psychological problem. Yeah, and I don't really take all that much. I will take, like, I've got, like, the lowest dose, which is, I think, the 5-325. That's 5 milligrams of hydrocodone, 325 of acetaminophen. And I break the pills in half, and I'll take, like, one half in the morning, one half in the afternoon. Sometimes I'll need the third half pill. I'm not taking that much. But it's still becoming more and more difficult. And, I mean, I've been doing this for over 10 years. I think it's clear I am in no danger of addiction and yet, I gotta go every six months and pee in a cup and stuff like that. And I still say, it is very hypocritical, you know, for people to say you can't take opioids because they're bad for you, but go ahead and smoke and drink all you want. Well, and it's like there's other stuff that's far worse, because I take gabapentin at night for neuropathic pain, because gabapentin, uh, it's actually epilepsy medicine, but it also blocks neuropathic pain. But it takes 12 hours to get out of your system instead of the six hours that hydrocodone does because if i took a hydrocodone at night i'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning in pain and the gabapentin keeps me going but if i take it during the day i get depression i mean not wanting to go and you know slip my wrist depression but just the kind of depression where nothing's worth getting up and making an effort for yeah you're like marvin from a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy yeah it's just just no, no point i'll just stay in bed no need to get up and make money and pay bills and stuff like that well, and also, acetaminophen, how many people are getting liver damage from acetaminophen? Yeah, you know, that Tylenol you take for your headache is more dangerous than Imodium. Oh, yeah. And I mean, even if I'm being completely generous to them and say that, okay, all of this is happening and all of this is just the way you've described and all of this is exactly the problem you say it is, what they're talking about is just going to make it harder for people to get it, and that's just going to drive them to heroin and other harder drugs. Yeah. When will they learn? Yeah. You know, that's why I will never, ever believe a person that says, you know, we need to get the government in healthcare. I say, if we want a medicine to go down and become cheaper, we need to get the government out. So all of that makes the FDA this week's biggest bug matter. <laughs>